Myth is a folklore genre consisting of narratives that play a fundamental role in a society, such as foundational tales or origin myths. The term myth is widely used to imply that a story is not objectively true. At least that's what Wikipedia says. Roblox seems to have coined this myth thing, and honestly, I'm all for it. They use this term to describe stories, especially ones that are made by the people in the community. Some are a lot like creepypastas, used to spread rumors and fear among Roblox players, and others are performed like an ARG, and some are specifically set up for you to play in Roblox games and possibly even interact with the people that play the characters themselves. In other words, real-time capsules of stories made to be discovered and interacted with. Today, I'll be taking you down this road with me, or more like rabbit hole. I'm pretty new to this myth thing, and honestly, I've learned a lot already from dipping my toes into it, and hey, maybe you could learn a thing or two as well. This video series is dedicated to breaking down Roblox's most beloved myth games, and to start off, it's going to be none other than the Cult Family Games. The thing is, we're not just going to speed run through this, we're not going to be reading off pages from the Cult Family fandom wiki pages and just spewing them right back at you. No, 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 no. I'm doing this all on my own. Head first, no thoughts. I feel like the concept behind storytelling for myths is super interesting and breaking down the inner workings of a game, not literally, to find secrets and lore pieces, it, it's kind of fun. Makes you think, makes your brains turn. I'll also make some critique on the actual games themselves and how they're presented in a more game dev side of things, although I have a little to no game development experience, because I believe immersion is also super important in terms of making this entire story thing roll. The choices you make regarding a game's design will affect how a player reacts or feels. Sometimes you've got to feel as if you're actually in these places, just like how movies will immerse you into their stories, or Dungeons and Dragons can make you feel like you're really playing the character and experiencing all these things through their eyes. Roblox games can do the same, and fairly siding with Roblox on this, they're not just games, they're experiences. Fair warning, I will look into things pretty heavily, a lot more than you'd expect. I might take things that may seemingly be normal to you and over-complexify them with meaning and semiotics. I'll bring my nerd brain into all of this, so please don't go and comment things like, you're reaching so far into this, there's no possible way. I know. I know I am, I know. I've seen some myth content in the past, specifically from the cult family, but uh, in this video, I won't be referencing all of it here. I'm not gonna go through the cult family Discord server for bits and pieces of lore uh, or anywhere else. In this video, I'm gonna go through everything based off of my own research inside games and my own thoughts that I'm presented and everything that I've seen and heard on my own. I'll take things one by one and we'll be using this first part to build a base for the entirety of the series. And please don't write meta comments that explain the subtext into things we're about to get into the game. Not everyone is a myth expert. I for sure am not one myself, but it's just fun to do things on my own. Anyways, let's start. The Homestead was published to Roblox on the 26th of December, 2021 on the Roblox group Cult Family Rebirth. At the time of writing the script, it was updated on the 17th of March 2022 with over 49,000 visits, and now currently even more. The thumbnail of the experience features a sepia-like grainy photograph of a big home slash manor thing. Presumably the one we're going to see in the game. Spoiler alert, yes, it is the one we're going to see in game. Upon joining in, we see a skewed view of a cinematic camera panning through an interior, clipping through walls into some other rooms, but regardless, introducing the game for us. Upstate Louisiana, September 12, 1981. I have no idea how important these key dates are and if the state we're really in matters that much, but we'll just have to discover that. This is the homestead. As soon as the cinematic fades to black and brings us into our third person view, we're instantly met with a small landscape, a manor surrounded by large trees, presumably in a forest. As far as Google tells me, there are a lot of foresty areas in North Louisiana, so that sets it up for its location. The setup for lighting here makes the visuals really pretty, honestly super immersive. The sky complements the colors used in the world, it being warm with darker colors softly bending into the world. This palette gives us an odd sense of familiarity, yet 
clashes with the dirtier colors of the manor itself. The manor seems like it could definitely be real. We're getting the feeling that we're in the past, though. There's this odd thing with the graphic settings that I've realized. The game looks completely different with low and high quality settings. The lighting isn't as defined on low graphics, and some shadows show up on things that will completely obstruct the view on certain things on corridors where there isn't enough lighting in high graphic settings. And then the intro sequence, things look so much more smoother when the settings are all the way down. With that in mind, the outside area has two completely different moods. You may see me change the graphics quality in certain areas of the game to help me with seeing things. But anyways, the game instantly brings atmospheric sounds, except it pans really weirdly into my ears. Feels like it's coming from a source rather than multiple ones, as normal atmospherics sounds actually work. Listen to how the sounds will swing from one ear to another when I move my camera around. Walking forward, the footsteps as we go through the path of dirt just seems like a regular walking sound effect. Not really helping much in terms of immersion, but it's really something that can be shrugged off as the visuals of the game are really more important. Although sound design is a super powerful element in creating games that could immerse the player. As we enter, we hear wooden boards of the front porch creaking. Doors are already opened up as if we're already expected to enter inside. Footsteps change and actually fit to its environment now. Kinda. That's cool. We start to hear music from the inside. Seems like a, a radio is turned on and already playing its music. We see this reoccurring theme in myth games of music playing from very specific spots. And it's always radios that play them, not through any other diegetic means like vinyl turntables or TVs. Just food for thought. As soon as we walk in, we get a clear view of the inside and the layout of the manor. It's roomy. It looks a bit dusty, probably because of the use of its slight fog. But the place is neat and... You know, really well organized. On the left of the entrance, we have a small living space furnished with a lot of bookshelves. A few couches, tables, and a TV. To me, it doesn't seem like enough furniture. Or at least not big enough, considering how huge already the place is. On the left of the wall next to the entrance, there's a big frame with a picture on it. Seems like some kind of man in a suit holding onto a fish. Don't know who this guy is. We see a cross hung up at a certain height between two bookshelf spaces and right over a lamp. The lamp doesn't seem to have any light in it. Makes it seem like there's no use for it to be there. It's just odd. The ceiling light already fills the room with that warm looking color temperature. Helps setting up the mood and feel, especially when homes that use these kind of lights and bulbs will often feel more cozy and welcoming. Though we might see this as a possible bait and switch, which will present its less cozy and warm feelings later on. On the tables, we have a mug, a bunch of playing cards around it. The other has three books and an old TV that just displays white. Not even any static. Probably wasn't meant to be used for anything specifically. Probably just small decoration. But it's, it's an odd position for a TV to be in. Broken off of the view of the other side of the couch, unlike most living rooms where, where the TVs can be viewed by almost everyone in its surroundings. On the right side of the entrance, we have a connection to the kitchen with a dining table. A big cross sets itself in the middle of the wall. The game doesn't need to spoon feed you more. This is a Christian household. Big surprise. The dining table has a few plates and cups sitting there. Usually this isn't an uncommon view, but they're just sitting here, you know? As if some kind of food was already being prepared or left out. Normally it'd be cleaned up or picked after, no? That's odd. Unlike the entrance or seemingly the rest of the space in this game, the kitchen island is lit with some kind of fluorescent light. Approaching it, you can hear a slight buzz to it, just like those classroom lights when you're all alone inside them. The difference in the lighting here adds to the uncanniness of the game. Why would they place this kind of lighting here rather than a normal ceiling light? To be fair, I could be probably looking into this a lot, since the standard of kitchens are usually to use fluorescent lights, or things with a more cooler color temperature. There are two fridges here and oh my god, they are really noisy. Makes sense, they're old. Other smaller furniture like cabinets and oven, microwave, all that stuff. They have a lot of detail put into these. One detail that caught my attention though was the knife block. There seems to be room for six knives, but one of them is missing. You know, when I wrote this script, I thought this made sense and led up to something else, but no, the knife is on the cutting board. Yeah, I looked into it a little too much. <laughs> Next to the kitchen area, there's a ceiling lit corner with a wooden circle table. Two bottles, a lit candle, a rug under it, and two wooden chairs. It seems odd to have so many secluded seating areas separated from their own spaces in the main living rooms of the manor. I see this as a way to say that there are so many tables and spaces that 
This family seems to be very broken off in its own way, sitting in more secluded areas of their shared spaces. More crosses are visible from here, the one specifically on top of the light switch, not uncommon. Next to that, though, is a door that caught my attention. The second you approach it, you can only see what a peak of what's inside. The door can't be opened any more than that, and all you could see is another door through it. That's, that's it. Don't know what it's hiding, but it's odd. Yet again, more uncanny things about this manor. Seems like it's just hiding secrets on top of secrets. Across the kitchen, there's a little hallway with three doors positioned on the right. None of the doors can be opened, they're just locked. At the end of the hallway, though, is a small little corner. On the left side of the wall, there's a little table thing presenting an old rotary phone uh, and a mug. And these drinks are being placed around the house randomly. It's, it seems kind of odd. There are little coasters under them, so the mugs won't ruin the table. It's, it is a small detail, but I feel like it leads us to believe that even though these mugs might seem random, they're being taken care of somehow. But the fact that they're placed randomly around the first floor is pretty odd. No one would walk around this far just for this mug to drink it, then place it down to walk away. I don't know, just stupid. We see a small shelf holding an empty picture frame, a candle, some sort of books, and right over is a cross. And on the side is a portrait of some guy. Don't really know who this is, but there's a lot of imagery of this figure plastered around in the manor. Seems to be a door on the right, and as soon as we open it, a sound plays. Yeah, it's the sound of the door. What a surprise. This slow yet weird creak makes it a bit frightening at certain points of the playthrough. The, honestly, the sound scared the shit out of me as soon as I opened the door, playing full blast into my ears. Sliding through the door, we see a bathroom, a tub, a toilet, and a sink. Everything you need, right? The light, though, is another one of those fluorescent lights. The choice of these lights in certain areas and rooms feel oddly specific. The light's still making that noise we're so familiar with, yet hate to a certain degree. I think some of us would find nostalgia in these, even. The bathroom looks odd, though. The color temperature of the light mixed with the titling and the wall's patterns and original colors makes it look like a bathroom you'd witness some kind of murder in. It's not scary, per se, but it's just off-putting compared to the rest of the house. Going back to the start of the hallway, moving into the new area. We have a small storage area with some boxes inside. Nothing crazy, but it seems like they're storing a lot for a house that has so much room inside. There's also this kind of trap door under the boxes, but I don't really think it's really accessible through this. Across from here, we have some more doors, none of which can be opened. Silly game developers making me think I can open these and explore them. There's a few more empty portraits here, but one that caught my attention is this, uh, frame with some kind of person standing in front of a fire? Don't really know what this has to do with anything. On the far end of this area is a closed off corner with a piano in the corner. Corner, 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 corner. Backlit-ish by a candle? But this time the ceiling light is off here. This is kind of creepy. You'd think something would happen here, but no, it's just a piano. There's a small table holding a cross, but it feels like it should be hung up on the wall as well, no? A few books on the shelves and one candle. This is minimal, but these feel like inconsistencies that are somewhat apparent, but it doesn't seem like much people would want to walk back here after visiting anyways. And that is exactly what we are about to do. Let's move on. Walking up these set of stairs, we have some more spaces. On the left and the right side of the second floor, we have three doors, and on the middle, being presented to us as the first room is a set of doors. It seems like the master bedroom of the house, the biggest room for the biggest head. Usually master bedrooms are for couples, married, especially this kind of house. Christians. <laughs> but as soon as we enter, we get a little more info on this. Both doors can be opened, the cracking can be heard, and as soon as we're in, the old vinyl plays. Awesome! Another source of diegetic sound that isn't an old radio. Lol. On the right of that, there's a couch, a single chair, and in between, there's a decently sized table with two books, both having crosses on them. Are these Bibles? God knows. Pun intended. <laughs> On the right, a candle lights up a little table with an open book on it, and a click prompt actually does pop up. With a page flip sound effect, we're greeted with none other than David's journal. Entry 1. We finally moved into the homestead. A few of our family members have made the decision to make their own locations to live at to complete our jobs. The manner of getting raided by the police does not help to ease feelings about living with each other, which is understandable. Will has been more than gracious to let us stay at his various locations in return for membership and inclusion in family activities. Smith, the All-Father, has given me much encouragement and gratitude for carrying on the family legacy. God, there is a lot to unpack here. We're finally given some information. This family is many is scattered throughout some locations, but it seems like the homestead is their main living space for now. Considering David used we, 
multiple people settled in here. The manor getting raided by the police, though, raises a lot of questions. Will, another important figure, as it seems, is letting people sail around other places and return for membership and inclusion in family activities? What do they consider family activities? What kind of membership do they want to claim? And finally, the Allfather has given David the encouragement and gratitude for carrying the family legacy? Now, I don't know about you, but isn't like a legacy the thing that when the person wanting to transmit it, uh, some ancestor type shit is dead? I don't know how David is getting this encouragement, but it seems like it's partially working or not. Anyways, that's it for that. Displayed in the middle is a nice big bed, I guess, for David. The bed has a pillow on top on the right side and another fallen on the floor down on the left. There are nightstands on both sides of the bed, which have a lamp, candle, a little Bible thing again, and a picture with a frame. I honestly don't know who the fuck they are. The right side of the room has a super big bookshelf area, but on the far corner is a big circular mirror. On the bottom of it, there are three candles placed and a book placed on the floor. Odd, considering there's enough shelving room for a billion more books, but this single book being here as a use or explanation, or there should be at least. Seems like it could be associated with some ritual the second that I saw this. Exiting out on top of the two doors, there's our dreaded cross. Here is a challenge. Count how many crosses we come across in this video. No pun intended, but also intended. We're done with this room. Let's go to the left side. Across this big-ish hall area, there's a box just laying down right next to the door on the middle. And on the side, there's a little empty oval frame on the wall. Seems like there was much more to unpack. Oh, I hate myself. The door on the side seems to be locked for now and right on top of cross. Wow. On the far side of the left hall next to the windows, we got a nice little door. Hey, a decently sized room. On the left, we've got a bit of furnishing, a TV, a mug, and a knife. Awesome. We also had a uh, music playing through this old radio, but, uh, Ever since Roblox's uh, updates, I can't hear the music anymore. So you now it just kind of sounds like an old crow, whatever. But I promise there was music playing before. The radio, though, is set on top of the shelf with a cross and a cassette player, I'm guessing? I don't know, can't really tell. One thing about this room that's really odd, it's just the two beds that are positioned here. A small one fit for a single person, and another one which is just a mattress, a single pillow, a helmet, and a shotgun. Louisiana gun laws permit you to store guns under your mattress, I suppose. On the side, there's a closet area that's slightly open for a bit of visibility. But I don't think I see anything in it. Could be symbolism to represent, um, coming out of the closet. I don't know. <laughs> Can't come up with anything for this one. There's a nice big window here on the side. A decent view. The sun glaring into the room. It's pretty. Sometimes I just end up staring how pretty some of these places can be, although they are full of mystery. <laughs> They're nice. They're very well built. And finally, the only important thing in this room, a fucking cat. Oh my god. Best gameplay. This, this, wow, this is beautiful. You know, it's kind of odd to see a pet in this house with its litter box inside of a smaller room rather than outside common spaces. Feels weird, but it has food and water. Nice. Cute. Good gameplay. And now on to the other side. We've got yet another bathroom. This one's a little different, more stuff, it's a tiny bit bigger, lit with that lovely fluorescent light, except on two different corners in the room. And this time there is a candle on top of the toilet. This bathroom feels a lot more normal. It's full and it doesn't have as much dark corners. And the candle on top of the toilet adds some flavor to the room. It's kind of pretty. Also, more crosses. Right side, three doors once again. The one in the middle is locked for now. On the side, there's a table with a white pot and a rose inside. There's two other roses outside of the pot, but they're placed in really odd ways. One hanging off the painting on the wall and another was placed normally on the table. Weird, strange, peculiar. All we got on the door to the right is, well, you guessed it, a bathroom. This room looks odd. The fact that this bathroom's lighting is separated by a wall here creates a weird conflict subconsciously. The warm mood of the candle like clashes with the artificial feel of the cool color temperature on the side of the bathroom. It's pretty visually, but something just seems off, especially across the locked room. You know, this one that's like right here. As soon as we enter the door across the hall next to the window, we've got another decently sized room. This one though is messed up but not entirely beyond repair right up front there's this closet area with some broken pieces and, and two entire parts are just completely ripped off what happened here there's a little cap hanging from this uh handle i think inside the closet we see a black spray painted eye on the wall 
right next to it, a little drawing. The drawing has an odd style to it. Figure dressed in black, uh, wearing a cap. Seem to be looking at a door, or maybe it's this closet? With the words knock repetitively written on it and a question mark next to the person. On the other side, there's a black shadow figure with red eyes. God knows what the fuck this is. As soon as you realize what it is... Jesus fucking Christ. Two knocking sounds start playing in between one another. This low-key caught me off guard the first time when I actually took a closer look at this drawing. Now, during all this writing and my quote-unquote investigation, something happened. While I was checking out this room, someone from the cult family paid me a visit. They showed up right in the middle of me snooping around. His name is Emmett. I've seen him around here and there. I've spoken to him a handful of times, and to be fair, he was the first family member that I've ever seen and heard about when I started to deep dive into the cult family. So he's got a lovely little spot in my heart just for him, right here. Boop. Sadly, I don't have every single piece of footage from here since parts of my footage managed to break. I don't really know what happened. Probably because I was using the Xbox game bar to record most of my gameplay and my gameplay cuts off when I click out of anything, but I managed to save some recordings. Now, I want to give out a few notes before I actually preview this footage. I recorded this while I was writing the script for this video. Number two, it's going to be a tiny bit low quality. Number three, which might add on to it, played on uh, a very small window. Number four, this was played in a public server rather than a private server. And a lot of people were joining while I was doing this. This is why I had to re-record everything. And number five, I quickly shuffled around just to make sure that I actually recorded all of this. All of this using the Xbox game bar which is very unreliable. Honestly, I should have used OBS, but it slipped my mind. I am stupid. Also, throughout some of the footage, I'll be blurring the chat because, oh my god, people were so annoying. They were unironically meta-commentating this entire encounter, and that just felt weird, so that's the only thing I could do. Anyways, uh, enjoy the footage. He asks me what I'm doing in Jack's room, and obviously, what I respond is, I was just looking at the drawing inside the closet. He tells everyone to leave, and they probably do so. But not me though, I have to stay. And of course, the infamous myth turn. Uh, creepy. And he asks me what I'm doing here. He could have just said I'm doing a bit of investigating or just something like that. Obviously, I wasn't going to say I'm recording a YouTube video. I decide to say the most suspicious sounding thing in the world. I'm just looking around the place. Am I not allowed to? <laughs> what, what the fuck? He tells us he likes to decorate. Decoration is one way to call it. Does it unsettle you? I thought it was pretty cool at first. Probably something that to it that feels off. As much as we have visitors, there's one in particular I am not very fond of. There's this thing that tends to follow me. What might that thing be? I've never gotten its name. Does it talk to you? You should probably ask it. I don't need to talk to it. I don't want to. It's very personal with its topics. It's not human. It's not like you and me. It's different. It isn't like anyone or anything. It's just there. Smells like eggs. Um. What does it look like? It has so many eyes. More than I can count. Is it like some weird amalgam monster? Or a shadow figure thing? More shadowy. It resides in places I never thought it could. It's been called the poltergeist by many. Has anyone else seen it before? I have a feeling we all have. I've been out of town. People are looking for me. After that little conversation, he tells me to follow him. We go downstairs into the front of the manor. The place got kind of crowded, so it was literally impossible to talk to him, but he tells me he has one final thing to show me. He tells me to pick up the key inside of uh, Jack's room, as it is his name, I suppose. We grab it and he leads me to what I think is his room. And here we have our first event of the homestead. There was a lot to unpack there, but we'll cover it afterwards. Plus, we're not even done with Jack's room. Silly Emmett, interrupting us. 
He tells us this is where he used to live. I mentioned to him, did you see what happened? He tells me, what are you talking about? The TV, the knocking, the crosses went upside down, and all he says is goodbye. What a weird dude. All these supernatural occurrences, and he just kind of shrugs it off. Anyways, let's get back to, now that we know their name, Jack's room. On the side of the closet, we have a bed and a neat little nightstand right here. A mask and a knife, and in that drawer, as we saw earlier, was Emmett's room's key. Facing the bed is this mirror, or empty frame looking thing, and on top there's a cross over this spray painted of a red eye looking thing. A few posters are plastered on the wall, there's a little shelf um, containing a bat, and another on top of an empty picture frame. Next to that, a dresser with a small little baby TV on top, a knocked over lamp, red spray paint on top, and the black spray paint on the floor. As if it was recently used. Another book with a cross on it. On top of that, the mask we saw earlier on top of the nightstand. Spray painted on the wall. And that's all for this room. Let's go back to Emmett's room. After the event, everything is out of place. As if it wasn't already out of place, you dumb idiot. The bed's all shifted. The shelves are all crooked. The crosses on the walls are tilted. The TV that we saw, that it turned on and it wasn't even working earlier. This room is all over the place. This is Emmett, a seemingly unbalanced, weird guy. This is definitely the most obvious case of Emmett is not okay, explained into very obvious methods. Why would an event like that be put into the game without really explaining us about the character? Something odd is up with him. On the other side of the mess, we have a weird looking painting. I don't know what this symbolizes, but, um, Seems like there are letters on here, but as it states next to it, right here, there must be something I'm missing with this. I tried to Photoshop the letters, color, invert, contrast, anything, but unfortunately my methods did not work. Please let me know if there's something to this. And with that is Emmett's room. There is one place that I forgot to mention uh, in the beginning, and that is a little attic right on top of uh, David's room. Very conveniently placed, actually. As soon as you click on the ladder of the ceiling, it slowly comes down, and uh, the part of the attic just comes right out. Cool. After entering inside, this attic is huge. A lot of boxes spread around the room. The right side is lit with some small bulbs. Well, warm color temperature here. Fits the attic. The left side isn't lit at all. Barely, at least. Probably because there's nothing to see here, and I was right. Yeah, there is nothing to see. As soon as we walk in, I noticed a little book. Awesome. Will's seventh journal entry. The fear I had been dreading had occurred today. David inquired on my information about Nick's whereabouts. Of course, as a loyal member of this family, I had given up the location quite easily. I could not lie to the man who had given me so much. Although I was close, I will have to move on as it is for the greater good of the family. Today is the meeting at the Shallow Basket to discuss our plans for Nick and the future of the family. So this is Will's room, uh, attic. Nick disappeared and somehow he knew where they went? David needed to know and Will, being the ultimate meat rider of the century, told David. These motherfuckers got plans. Scary. Although it seemed like Will didn't want to reveal Nick's location as he's clearly dreading the day he'd ask. But uh, it wasn't enough dread to make him lie to David. Interesting family relation. The rest of the attic has a small mattress on the floor, some crooked crosses on the wall. And right next to it is a box with a key on it that we can actually pick up. On the corner, this chair and this candle are placed at this weird angle with the, the shadow behind pops up in an interesting manner on, under this cross. It's an interesting positioning, kind of off-putting, but it feels like it symbolizes something. I don't need to know if this has to mean anything. It looks fucking cool. You can't admit. I'm guessing the last locked room we talked about is probably going to be open with this new key that we found, so let's go, I suppose. Opening the door all of a sudden, it's all dark. As soon as we enter, the door closes, and we have our second event of the game. I locked the door and gave the key. I couldn't do what was asked of me. Goodbye. There is nothing here to find. After that, the door opens and the rain stops. 
After that, we got this fucked up mattress on the floor. A vinyl on the empty bed frame, water from all of the rain and thunder, right beside the open window, where it seems like that person seems to have left. The closet seems to be fine here, surprisingly, no gimmick with that there, but on the left side is a single chair in this odd little corner, with the writing on the wall. More symbolism? On the other side of the room, we got a little desk, a mask, and a note! Seems like it's the last one for us here. Nick's first entry. 07 1981 It's my birthday. I'm thinking about leaving this place finally. We settled in, but I'm not feeling safe or happy here. I was told it was time for me to earn my place as a functional cleaner in the family. I felt sick all the times I was included in the execution of those people called sinners. I think it's time for me to leave. I've become strong enough to get out of here. I don't know what I'm going to do about Jack, but there's nothing I can do for him. I'll stay for a few more weeks and tell David I'm going. I won't run away. I'll just leave peacefully with whatever I can take. <sighs> wow, okay, trauma dumping. Those activities they had planned, it was executions. They killed these sinners or whatever they've done. This is why the police came knocking at their door. It all makes sense now. Nick seems extremely uncomfortable, especially since they've taken part of those executions. I think it's trauma causing them to say this, but Nick saying, I've become strong enough to get out of here is absolute cope out of their mind. It's scary to think that they trusted David to get out of the situation thinking they wouldn't be part of all this bullshit, but it seems like David had other plans for them. Did Nick tell Will that they'd leave? Because that was definitely a bad idea, if so. And, uh, that's it? That That's it for the manor? So many mysteries are left uncovered. Where did Nick go? What is Jack seeing? What was Emmett talking about earlier? Who are these sinners they're executing? I may not have answers to these questions, but you know damn well that the homestead gave out a lot of information about the Colt family. There's a lot of secrets hidden beneath all the family stories, but I know for sure, as an introduction to the cult family, the homestead really filled me up on some things that I had no clue about. As a game, the homestead is super insightful, it's odd, it's creepy, most importantly, it's very high quality. The detailing and everything, the atmosphere, the sounds chosen for everything, this made a really good experience playing through. I really enjoyed this. If you have any recommendations on myth games to analyze and go through, please let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And thank you, Emmett, for making this experience even better for me.